Hello, welcome to another How to Code Well tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at wget. wget is the non-interactive downloader that you can get for any kind of Linux distribution as well as Mac. Now, if you're using a Mac like I am, then you need to install it. The best way to install it is using Homebrew, and that's literally brew install wget. I've already got it, so I'm not going to install it here. Um, but once you've got it, you can start playing with it. It's very, very powerful. You can literally download anything off of the internet, any kind of web page, anything um, to your machine. Um, obviously, as, as long as you've got access to that. Um, and you can also treat it like a spider. So you can actually crawl the web pages for things and search for things and only download certain bits and pieces and file types and so forth. We're going to take a look at all of that in a minute. Let's just take a look at the very basics of wget and actually download a file. So it's as simple as typing wget like this and then putting in the destination. So I'm just going to do just going to do the name of my blog. So peterfisher.me.uk. So that's going to download the index page of that site and it's downloaded it into the current working directory so if i did ls we can see that we have the index file here and if i did a du uh, minus whoops uh, hyphen h of the file we can see that it is 68k and we can cap that of course to actually see the internals of that so there you go i'm just going to clear that down so that's downloading a single file, but how about downloading the whole entire site? Maybe you want to do a mirror of a site. Well, let's first of all, what I'm going to do is just remove that file, clear that down, um, and we're going to do it recursively. OK, so let's just do wget again, but this time do hyphen r. So using the r argument, which is going to do it recursively. If I press enter, it's going to download not only that page, but all the other pages that are connected to that, as well as all of the uh, the links and the resources. So the JavaScript, the CSS, everything. And it's just going to do it recursively. Um, so that's what the hyphen R is. What I'm going to do is just kill this now um, and do an LS to actually see what we've got. So we actually have in this working directory, um, the, the website, peterfisher.me.uk. Just going to clear that down, make some room. And I'm just going to cd into here. And as we can see, we actually have the directory structure of the website. So we have the blog, the contact, the hire, how to code well, and so forth. And if I was to go into this stuff, if we did cd into, let's say, uh, how to code well, for example, whoops. Uh, not a directory. Well, that should have been the directory. Let's go into something else. So let's do, um, can I go into blog? Nope. Apparently these are just empty files, which is a bit odd. Let's do ls minus al. Um, yes. Okay. Well, the, we've got, we've got a couple of directories here. Uh, let's do wp json. Maybe it hasn't actually gone through those those are uh, those directories to build up those things. So let's do an LS of that. And we have the index of of that WP hyphen JSON. And again, we've got um, WP content and so forth. Um, what I can do is in the WP content here, uh, I can see the plugins and the themes and so forth. Now, what I'm showing you here isn't actually sensitive stuff. It is literally just how the web handles it right this is what the web sees so you can access that um, let's just clear that down okay so that's all well and good and you can download and mirror your sites and so forth and you can do it with google you can do this against other websites too and just download a full copy of that now there, there is a way of preventing wget from doing so but you know it, it, it is a very good handy tool if you want to just quickly do a backup of something um, one thing we will look at right now, though, is how to actually use wget as a way of spidering over your website and actually discover broken links. So actually discovering if the website has any broken links in that. And it's a, that, that is a very useful, powerful thing. So 
um, what we're going to do is we're going to add a lot of arguments into this. So wget, and I'm just going to do hyphen hyphen help. And as you can see, there is a whole plethora of options and arguments that we can supply to wget. We can do all sorts of things, FTP things. We can do HT, um, HSTS um, things. We can do all sorts of stuff, especially with HTTPS and, and the, how we can access directories and all of that stuff. Loads and loads of options here, right? Lots of stuff that we can do. Now, if you put this in a certain order and so forth, then you can actually use wget as a great way to spider your website to find out what pages are actually broken and actually output those to either another terminal window or a log file. And that is what we're going to deal with now. We've already had a look at hyphen r, which is doing it recursively. Um, there is also a hyphen hyphen spider argument, which is this one down here, which means don't download anything. OK, so in the example I showed you before, when it was finding something, it would download that um, and create a directory structure. We don't want to do that. We only want to find out whether something is broken. OK, so uh, spider is a very good argument to do that. We are also going to use um, hyphen ND um, and that is no directory. I'm just going to try and find that. Um, I mean, there is so much stuff here, right? I mean, let's let's. Uh, uh, da, 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 somewhere in here, somewhere in here is ND. Here we go, directories, no directories. So don't create the directories. Again, we don't want anything. We just want an output to say this is broken. Next, we're going to, to use the hyphen L. And hyphen L means levels. So with hyphen R, we're going recursively. We can actually tell how recursively we need to go. OK, so these are how many levels deep can we go? By default, I believe that um, uh, wget goes by five, so five levels deep. You can change that. Um, and I'm just going to do one level deep, OK, just for, for argument's sake. So here we are. L is the maximum recursion depth, um, zero for infinite, OK? So uh, that will just go infinitely recursively. We don't want to do that. We're just going to do for one for now. The next thing we're going to do is hyphen W. Now hyphen W, which is all the way up here, is wait. So basically this means that we are waiting per request. So I think it's up here a little bit more. Here we are, wait. So waiting in seconds. So between retrievals, right? So it, it hits one link and then it waits maybe a second and then it looks for another link and so forth. Next thing we're going to do is hyphen O. Hyphen O is output, which I believe is down here uh, somewhere. And basically hyphen O uh, gives you an output, puts all the stuff in an output log file so it doesn't actually attack it to the screen, which is very handy, right? Because we literally want to find out what is broken and what isn't broken. Um, so you give it a log. And I th so I think hyphen O, here we go, is output. So that writes the doc documents to a file. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use hyphen R and then spider hyphen ND and then hyphen L for uh, level hyphen W to wait a couple of seconds, and then hyphen O to output. And the last thing, of course, is hyphen NV, and that is no verbose, which basically means that it's going to condense down the output to exactly what we need. I'm going to play with around with these just to give you an idea of the differences that we can have with these arguments. So let's go ahead and do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is just clear down what we've got. So let's just go back to here. And let's uh, let's go up another level. Yeah, that's good. And let's just do an rm minus rv of uh, that file of that directory and clear that down. That's great. So we're going to do wget, and we're going to do hyphen r again because we're doing it recursively. But this time hyphen hyphen spider because we don't want to download anything. Um, we're going to do hyphen nd. OK, OK, as well as hyphen NV, because we don't want any verboseness coming back, back out of this. We just literally want to find what is broken and what isn't. And I'll play with, around with that in a minute. Hyphen ND, of course, is no directories, so we're not getting any directories. That's fine. We're also going to do hyphen L because we want to 
do the amount of levels. So let's do one and then hyphen W to wait. And we're going to wait for about a second after each request and then hyphen O, which means that we're going to supply an output file. So here we're going to have uh, W get dot log, right? Um, and then we're going to pass in the address of the thing that we want to crawl. So in this case, let's do this, peterfisher.me.uk. And what that's going to do now is crawl that website. Let's press enter and you'll notice that you don't actually get any output. It's not, it, it, it is still running, but there's no output at all. What you need to do is create a new terminal window if you did an ls, you can see that we have the log file. What I like doing is just tailing that. So tail minus f to follow that. Go into wget and do that. And as you can see, it's going to slowly start churning away. Did you see that add another line there? It's going to do it another one after another second. It's going to check it. And then it's going to, to continue. And it's going to do that all through the uh, through the website okay so this is how you can crawl your website and at the end of it you'll you'll find out what is broken and what isn't broken if there is anything broken at all um, and it's basically checking that and you see we've got the 200 okay response so that is an okay response what we're looking for of course is a 404 404s mean that the page cannot be found but this is very handy what you can do is put this on maybe a cron OK, so you can do this every sort of month after a release and just ensure that nothing is coming back as a anything different than a 200 OK, because that means that you have a problem. There is a problem area that it's been found. So this is how you can use a crawler to crawl over your stuff. And it's basically just giving you a quick feedback loop. What you can do is um, check this log file and only return uh, 500 errors, 404 errors, and so forth. Um, but, and, and then, you know, if you come across that fire off an automated email to yourself, just to say, look, you know, after that last re release, we have some issues on the, sc on the screen. Um, it's very good to find out the status, the general status of your site. Now, I don't uh, wish everyone to just hammer my website for this, but do um, check your own website, do check other websites as well. Now, what we're going to do is play around a little bit with the output of this. So I'm just going to close this. So Control and then C to cancel that out. Go back to the other tab and close that as well. Right, so we've got here this huge plethora of stuff here, right? So we've got the hyphen nd and hyphen nv. What happens if we change that hyphen nv? So we actually want some verboseness to it. And then just go into nv here, remove that from here. Now press um, enter again, go back into the other tab. Let's just clear this down and tail, oops, and tail that. And what we can see is we have actually got the output that would normally you would see from wget. So it's all of this sort of dot, dot, dot stuff and then the file size. And can you see it? it's just hugely weighted, right? We don't need any of this stuff. And that's why we have the hyphen NV flag um, because we don't need any of this stuff. There's, no, there's just no point, right? What you're looking for is that. Now, what you could do is after you have uh, this completed, right, you can you can um, grep the log file to look for different status codes, which is very, very handy. Let's just put that back to what it was. And again, the hyphen W is the weight. OK, so if I was to increase that, then that will make it a longer period of time before uh, requests. Thanks ever so much for watching. If you haven't done so already, do subscribe and also do check out my Docker course, Docker in Motion by Manning Publications. I'll leave a link in the description as well as a card in this video. Thanks ever so much. See you again. Happy coding. Cheers. Bye.